Hi, my name is Nicole. Today I'm going to talk about the up and coming major trend in education, teacher led schools. Teacher led schools or teacher powered schools are collectively designed and implemented by teachers and educators. These teachers or educa and educators have secured autonomy to design and run the schools in which they teach at. They make the decisions in which in areas that influence school success, such as the curriculum, the school budget, selecting personnel, and more. So what happens within a teacher-powered school, really? Um, in a teacher-powered school or a teacher-led school, um, teachers have the greater ability to make the, to make the dramatic changes that they determine are needed to truly improve student learning and the teaching profession. Some of these um, changes include personalized learning for both teachers and students. A big push in these teacher-led schools are project-based learning, which is all about the student and um, all about student-centered and what projects the student can take and create to be successful in that given area in which they're learning about. Um, addressing teacher quality issues by making um, teaching a more attractive job and career. Um, teachers like to be heard. They like to they like to have their voices be heard and to make changes that in schools that they think are important and not all of these teachers like to go through an administrator to do that. Um, it also increases the sense of ownership among teachers in, in areas where they have authority to make decisions. And by collaborating with administrators um, or other teachers in those schools, it really boosts the student's achievement and the authentic assessments in which, um, teacher, in which students are learning. So what sort of powers do these teachers specifically have in teacher-powered schools or teacher-led schools? Like I mentioned previously, um, the teachers at these schools have a number of autonomies they are in charge of. Some schools have more than others, but typically include duties such as selecting and deselecting colleagues and other staff members, so they are in charge of the hiring process. Um, they can control a budget. Sometimes they are even in charge of making the budgets and um, having the budget audited and determining school level policies as well. Um, so examples like making the student handbook and um, following through with disciplinary actions if needed as well. In some cases, teachers are split up into um, different teacher leadership teams and each team team is in charge of one autonomy. So for example, one, one teacher would be in charge of um, the hiring process or a group of teachers would be then in, in charge of a hiring process while other teachers in that school would be in charge of a different a different power um, while others in other senses there is still a regular administrator who has all of the duties but in in the grand scheme of things the teachers will have the main the main say at the end of at the end of the day um, these administrators, um, I say it with quotes, um, they have, they still have teaching duties, they just have a lighter load if they are in charge of more autonomies. That's typically how the, the process is set up for them. Um, teacher leadership in, or leadership, excuse me, within teacher-led schools um, might look a little different. These schools are not anti-principal, they're not anti-administrator. Um, um, all of these teacher-powered schools have a higher leader, um, per se. They're not, they're not all just running free and rampant. <laughs> um, usually teachers, like I said before, they, they will select different teams, um, and then they hold, they hold, um, those teams accountable for further performance. Um, they would, might deselect them if their performance is unsatisfactory, or, um, they might switch them to a, to a different autonomy if needed. Some schools have a principal, um, some have rotating lead teachers, and others have a committee 
a teacher leadership committee that makes decisions. But again, like I had mentioned before, the final decision making authority lies within a collective group of teachers and the leaders are there to just help carry out their decisions. So some, so like I said, some of these teacher led schools do have principles because they're not anti-principal. Um, the, the principals are there to just to guide the teachers and to just like a, a typical administrator would do. Um, but if there would be, uh, the major decisions would be made th uh, through the teachers themselves rather than just in the power of the principal. So what does this overall movement look like? Um, to date, there are more than 150 teacher powered public schools um, spanning through at least 20 states. Um, Minnesota, actually kind of cool, has um, a lot of these, a lot of these schools involved within the state. Um, these schools are charter schools. They are not found in the public um, within a di within a school district. They are private charter schools. I think that's important to say. Um, these schools serve students from preschool age to age twenty one. Um, like I said, the only thing these schools have in common is the fact that they are all private charter schools, meaning that they are not affiliated with district employed schools. So I'm actually going to pull up a um, a map here. This map will show um, where these where a lot of these schools are located. So as we can as you can tell, a lot like I said are are located within the Midwest area. A lot are in Minnesota, um, on the west coast and along the east coast as well. You can find some there as well. So I'm going to give you some examples, two examples of these teacher-led um, schools. The first example, or both of these are located in Minnesota. I thought that was important to, to do since we are here in Minnesota. Um, they are both teacher-led private charter schools um, that have had a lot of success. So for the first school, I um, I actually chose this one because I knew a little bit about it before um, looking into this educational trend because it's the school that my cousins attend. My aunt, her two kids, they attend this school. It is called the Minnesota New Country School and it is located in Henderson, Minnesota. Um, it serves more than 200 students in kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, the Minnesota New Charter or Minnesota New Country School, excuse me, um, they follow a project-based curriculum where students have, um, they each receive an individualized learning plan, which with focus on learning from hands-on experiences while still focusing on basic skills um, like math and reading and writing your core curriculum. Um, credit is earned based on the um, the quality of learning demonstrated at the end of at the the end with the end product product of the project sorry um, students are given responsibility and choice regarding what they learn here at the school they set their own goals and they accomplish their own tasks with the guidance of advisors and staff um, my my cousins that attend the school they they enjoy it their their parents enjoy them going to the school and they think it's they think it's different and that they they really do see um, their, their, their kids learning from this school. It's, it's, a, it's a normal school with normal teachers. Um, the teachers just make the choices. Um, and this, the students, they have a, a more lenient school day where they go at their own pace and they do a lot more hands-on than a regular school might do. Um, another example is also located, this one is also located in Minnesota. Um, this is called the Avalon Charter School. It's in St. Paul. Um, it is a public charter school for students in grades 6 through 12, where the main focus is again on project-based learning, a model which empowers our, their students to explore their passions while developing the communication, time management, and collaborative skills necessary to succeed in today's day and age. So again, this school focuses on hands-on learning. The students are going with their own pace um, and the staff and advisors are there to make sure that they are there to meet their goals that they have set for themselves. This particular school is rare because the educators here have the power over every administrative decision there is to make. 
while educators at other teacher-led schools don't typically have all of the powers. So in this example, there is no principal here. It is strictly the teachers and the staff members um, who are making the decisions. Um, there is no one leader. There are, there are groups of leaders um, who, in which they do, in which they do everything. Um, for example, teacher, teachers here are in charge of everything from hiring new staff members to disciplinary acts at the highest levels and even the school's budgeting they are in charge of as well. And again, this one is at the Avalon Charter School in St. Paul here in Minnesota. I thought that one was pretty um, cool to include as well. Uh, so what does the data say? I know there can be some skeptics among other schools and communities um, that don't know about these teacher-led schools or teacher-powered schools. Um, so is this trend actually successful for educators? And most importantly, is it, su is it successful for the students they teach? Um, people and other educators who are viewing these types of schools from the outside often have questions if this system is really working. Um, a report from the Consortium for Policy, Research, and Education shows that schools with higher levels of teacher leadership, which in this case means the amount of input teachers have in school decision-making, higher levels of instructional leadership, and the extent to which school leaders focus on the core activities of teaching and learning are said to produce greater student achievement, making the teacher-powered model a win for students and teachers alike. Um, according to the same report, many schools fail to emphasize the areas of instructional and teacher leadership that matter the most for student achievement. For example, students often grant teachers authority over areas specific to the classroom, such as control over instructional practices, but the research shows that student achievement is more strongly correlated with the role of teacher decision-making in school-wide policy, particularly in establishing student discipline policies and crafting school improvement plans. Um, that, I mean, to, that, that basically means at the end there that, um, for example, if a, if a teacher has a student that is in trouble, um, they, the, the principal would, would really be the one to make the disciplinary acts. Um, well, in a teacher-led school, that, that same teacher would be the one who would make the disciplinary acts. And the data is showing that when the teacher makes it versus the principal, then the student will learn um, essentially not to make that mistake again, or they will they'll learn from their from their discipline that they receive. Um, the data suggests um, that when teachers have input into the larger decisions that affect a school's climate and ethos, the school performs better. So in this chart at the bottom here, um, this basically is a chart um, where the data shows that the public thinks teachers should have a greater role and more trust implementing changes within schools. And that is exactly what the teacher-powered, um, teacher-led schools are doing. Um, so if, to taking, taking a look at this chart at the bottom here, um, tailoring, tailoring instruction to individual students, selecting textbooks, um, shaping curriculum, um, classroom technology, implementing core common state standards, and making staffing and scheduling decisions. Um, the public thinks that teachers should have a greater role in all of these things, which is, again, exactly what the teacher-powered schools are letting their staff members control. So, um, in conclusion, despite the growing support for the teacher-powered schools among district-employed educators, the model remains easier to implement and more, and it is more sustainable in a truly decentralized system, a system of um, public charter schools. Overall, this major trend in education seems like the winning combination for the communities in which they already serve. It is a growing major trend that is up and coming in education. Um, there are educators everywhere who want autonomy, or in the very least, they want to be heard and to have their thoughts and ideas be supported, and getting involved in a teacher-led or a teacher-powered school is a great way um, in order, is a great way to, to do this. Thank you for listening. Um, these are my resources. Have a fantastic day.